Is that cool? You guys okay with that? Now, this is where the wheels fall off the cart a little bit because when I talk about the pulley, the pulley isn't linearly accelerating, but is it angularly accelerating? It is, right? So if that's true, we have to talk a little bit about angular acceleration. So I'm going to pause this for a second. We'll come back to it in a sec. When we were talking about translational versus rotational, we had our values, delta x, v, delta x, v, a, f, m, right? We have analogs for these, don't we? So this is the change in the angle. This is the angular velocity, angular acceleration. What is our rotational analog? What is our rotational analog for force? And this yesterday was where we left off. What is our rotational analog for mass? So this is our value. We use capital letter I. All right, we call this the rotational inertia. Okay, and it is both a measurement of how much mass and how that mass is distributed. Is that cool? How did Newton relate um, acceleration, force, and mass? Sure. A lot of times we'll say it slightly different, though. We'll either say, ooh, the acceleration is equal to the net <laughs> acceleration is the net unbalanced force over mass. This actually has the right cause and effect. The acceleration is caused by a net unbalanced force which is determined by the mass. This is the right cause and effect, but oftentimes mathematically we'll just roll out F net equals MA. You guys okay with that? So if you want an object to angularly accelerate, what do you need to do? How do you open a door? Is it torque over rotational inertia? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Okay? So if you want an object to angularly accelerate, you need to apply some sort of net torque. Uh, BT dubs, just a just a quick aside. This will be important. This will be important. But if I want to calculate translational kinetic energy, how do I calculate that? One half mv squared. Okay. But if an object is rotating, like if you watch this thing rotating, okay, do you think there's kinetic energy there? Yeah. There is. All right, check with your neighbor, develop an expression for the rotational kinetic energy. So, I'm going to have an equation for rotation. Let's call it So, we could use like We could like. All right, I'm going to ask someone wearing Crocs. Ask like, <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, <laughs> like, wait, what? Just kidding. I'm gonna ask someone wearing a orange shirt. But it's tough because they're all at different angles. Sorry. All right. Um, we're just gonna make the we're just gonna make the analog here. Okay. One half what? Not mass, but the inertia, the rotational inertia times what? Wombo squared. No. Um, 
next, uh, we'll probably, yeah, maybe Monday, we'll talk about the relationship between these two. Um, but this is, if you want to solve for the rotational kinetic energy of an object, one half I omega squared. Not really a one one. Uh, and it's not a W. What is a one one? Isn't it a Greek letter? I never watched SpongeBob either. Oh, but you were also. I would never let my kids watch that. What? What? Yeah. what do they watch? <laughs> the study of let them watch the original SpongeBob episodes. They're so like season one. Let him hear it. They're so dumb. They watch American Ninja uh, Warrior. They're so dumb. Yeah. They watch Ninja Warrior. They watch a lot of baseball. <laughs> As they should. Get them in the football. No, it's just not the No, it's not the Because they want to anybody but a I need to get a band. What? That was a Is that your last name? It's gone. All right, so let's go back now. Okay? Let's go back now. And now where we're at is I have three forces on my pulley. I have the force of the support, I have the force of the earth, and I have the force of the strain. Do any of those supply a torque on the pulley? Yes. Check with your neighbor now. Do any of those supply a torque on the pulley? Does one supply torque? Do they both supply torques? Do all three supply torques? I don't know, man. I don't even know what torque is. Don't be Mr. Matthew. Sean, come on, bro. Sean, here's the art. Force of the support supplies zero torque. He's so shocked. I know, I was shot down here. I really don't care. I'm going to see it. What did you say? Nothing. I was thinking. I just said, it's zero. Yeah, it's like so the sign of zero is zero. So it doesn't matter what the radius is. Zero is rotation. Also, the radius is zero. How would you guys? I was still on the first signal. Yeah, sure. Make sure to bring it. All right. So, what is a torque? Yeah. A torque is the combination of the force and the distance from the pivot point. It's basically what causes an object to turn. Okay? You need to satisfy two components. You need to have a force, and that force needs to have some distance from the pivot point. Okay? And the third thing is there has to be an angle between um, the, the radius vector and the force vector. So let's look over here. Okay? We have three forces here. Do any of them, do any of them supply um, a torque? So I colored in blue the pivot point. That's the center of rotation for the pulley, true? Well, the earth is drawn from the center of mass, the force from the earth. Is that a force? Yes. Yes. Is it some distance from the pivot point? No. No, it's actually at the pivot point. So if zero, the radius is zero, what's the torque value? Zero. Zero. And think about it. Is the earth pulling on this causing any torque? No. What about the support? Can the support cause any torque? No. No, because it's also at the pivot point. Can this tension supply yes. a torque? Yes. It can because when I look at it, it is a force. And this orange is your R vector. Okay? That is your R vector. Okay? You guys with me on that? Yeah. Now, does it supply the, the information we need? Is it a force? Yes. Is that some radius from the pivot point? Yes. Is there an angle between them? There is. And what's cool about this is in this situation, what do you notice about the angle between them? It's 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. 90 degrees. Perfect. Which makes it easy because sine of 90 is 1. one. Are there any other torques on our dude here? No. Okay. So if I want to express the net torque, it would be equal to R times Ft. This is all angular too. Mm -hmm. I feel like I still don't have like a good understanding of like uh, what one torque is. Like, 
uh, what it looks like when it has more torque. Well, what's interesting about this is Um, the thing I want you to know today is that an unbalanced torque will cause an object to angularly accelerate. Right? We're gonna actually going to explore this in a, in a slightly different context. We're going to talk about um, balanced torques first, but I wanted to give you a sense of what this looks like. Hello. balanced. How's that possible? Oh, that was no good. Are those the same maps? No. I'll give you a hint. You can't see it from where you are, but they're not on the same hole. Oh, oh yeah, they are. Wait, what did you say? Sorry. I said you can't see it from where you are, but they're on different pulleys. Oh, that's right. This yeah. is a yeah. stepped pulley apparatus. And so what I have here is like a this. Here. So, what's the situation here? Is it accelerating linearly? Because nobody's going anywhere. Is it accelerating angularly? No. So if there's no linear acceleration, all the forces have to balance. If there's no angular acceleration, all the torques have to balance. So I have, at a radius of 2R, I have 50 grams, and at a radius of 1R, I have 100 grams. Does that seem like it might balance? Yeah. Okay. We'll explore this a little bit more tomorrow. Um, I think that there's a lot to mine here. Okay.